Without Good Friday, without Jesus' suffering of the cross, there would be no Resurrection Sunday. There would be no road to Emmaus, no doubting Thomas, no wounded hands or side, no locked doors or Pentecost or letters from Paul, at least not in the ways we know them. The Christian church exists because of the whole story of Jesus, his life, death, and resurrection. The Stations of the Cross are a long-practiced tradition of Christians across the world and across denominations. Every day, people travel to Jerusalem to walk the Via Dolorosa, the Way of the Cross. At 14 stations throughout the city, they stop to read and pray through the story of Jesus' crucifixion. Throughout the world, churches prepare their own stations. Today, Good Friday, 2020, we, the people of Westview Church, New Beginnings Worshiping Community, Light of Christ Ecumenical Catholic Community, and Bethlehem Lutheran Church, walk these stations together with images from our own communities and prayers from our pastors, Pastor Nicole Garcia, Pastor Terry Shang, Father Terry Harin, and Pastor Katie Chilino. We encourage you to set your worship space and center yourself. Find a quiet place, maybe dim the lights, take a deep breath, even pause this video. As we begin to travel the Stations of the Cross together, we pray. Lord, gather us into your way today, the way of life, healing, and wholeness, the way of justice and righteousness and peace, the way which is not always easy, but the way which is good, the way of love, the way of the cross. Amen. Matthew 26, verses 36 to 41, Station 1. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. In times of fear, we have choices in how we cope. There is the choice to deny that which we fear, or we may look it head on, see the truth, and set space apart to meditate and pray. Facing that which is fearsome, we ask our most trusted companions to be with us at our most vulnerable. How much worse when they too abandon us as we shake with grief. Let us pray. Holy God, have mercy on us. You know we too often prefer to look the other way than to face the reality of fearful situations. Give us heartfelt courage to awake from sleep like Lazarus, to know the stench of death around us, and still to remain by our neighbor's side like the courageous medical personnel who are witnessing 
to courage even in their fear. Forgive us, Holy One. Amen. The second station, Jesus is betrayed and arrested from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 43 through 46. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. O oh Lord, we love you and follow your teachings, but there is a bit of Judas in all of us. We pledge our lives to you, yet in many ways we often live to fulfill our own desires and neglect those around us. Fill our hearts with your love so we are truly devoted to you and help us to love our neighbor as you love us. Amen. Jesus is condemned. Luke chapter 22, verses 66 through 71. Station 3. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Let us pray. Jesus, did you know to get up early this day and watch the sunrise? Did you witness orange be born yet again? Did you savor your morning coffee? Did you drink it from the cup your mother made for you from clay? Did you know to even put that cup in your bag as you traveled to Jerusalem? Did you know that there were pieces of palm branches still stuck to your clothing? Did you know that a little boy had slept with his palm branch peacefully after seeing you enter the city? Did you know who would be the last person to hold your hand? Did you know to linger there for a while? Did you know to stretch this morning as long as possible? And did you know that God would tuck you in at the end? Did you know, Jesus, that Fridays would never be the same. O oh, Jesus, incarnate one, what do you want us to know? Amen. Jesus is denied. Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 through 75. Station 4. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also are with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him and said, 
to the bystanders. This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Let us pray. Lord, your love is steadfast. Your word is justice. Your actions faithful. Our love, O Lord, is often not. Our words are often clouded with judgment. Our actions more fearful than faithful. We grieve that, like your beloved Peter, we eat the bread of life from your hand and then go out and deny you. Give us the strength to love better, to speak justice, to be faithful. And when we are not, give us the space to weep. Amen. Mark 15, verses 1 through 5 and 15. Station 5. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. What does it feel like to be accused? What is our responsibility as a council or anybody standing in judgment? Perhaps when Jesus said, you say so, he knew that on this earth, at that moment, his voice would not be heard anyway. Only those in power had a voice. Let us pray. Holy and mighty, Help us to be humble. Help us to see our neighbors as our siblings and to love them as ourselves. Where some have no voice, guide our tongues to lend them ours on their behalf. Help us to be advocates of the silenced and hidden. Give us courage. Give us heart. Amen. The Sixth Station, Jesus is Scourged and Crowned, from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 1 through 3. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came to, up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. O Lord, you were delivered into the hands of those who feared you. You suffered the physical pain of torture and were subjected to the taunts and jeers of those who believed they had power over you. Yet you did not beg for mercy. We know you are with us in our pain and you stand by us when we suffer. Comfort all those who need to find hope in the midst of our lives right now. Amen.
Jesus bears the cross. John chapter 19, verse 6 and 15 through 17. Station 7. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. Let us pray. O oh God, our God, we want to look away. Like the disciples, we want to deny that our hair is braided with yours, that you have held our hands, that you know our names. This is not the first time that the God of trees and oceans and moonlight and word shakes, quakes, rakes death into God's very being. You carry the cross by yourself. You, O oh God, our God, incarnation swaddled in human flesh and bones. You are soul weary, so weary, too weary to stop time. We are that too, God soul weary, so weary, too weary to stop time. You know, incarnate one, and offer to hold our hands. You never look away and call us with love by our own names. Amen. Jesus is helped. Mark chapter 15, verses 19 through 21. Station 8. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Let us pray. Lord, you are strong and mighty and powerful and mocked, and spit on, and struck down into physical exhaustion. And you were helped. Compel us to help those in whom we see your face, in whom we hear your voice. And when we ourselves are struck down, let us receive help with gratitude, knowing that it is holy to both give and receive. Amen. Luke chapter 23, verses 27 to 31, station 9. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, 
and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Jesus weeps for the imbalance of justice in the world that births generation after generation of innocence inheriting the misfortunes and mistakes of their ancestors. As he tells the women, weep for yourselves, not for me, he says, I see you, I have compassion for you, even in my own pain. Let us pray. Teach your church, O Lord, to mourn the sins of which it is guilty and to repent and forsake them, that by your pardoning grace, the results of our iniquities may not be visited upon our children and our children's children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Tenth Station, Jesus is Crucified, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 33 through 34. And when they came to the place that is called the Skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. O oh Lord, you lived your life amongst the lowly and the outcast. You were crucified with criminals, yet you prayed for those who condemned you. May we find the courage and strength in our love for you to reach out to those who are not like us. Help us to create pathways to peace through the understanding and compassion you showed us when you were upon the cross. Amen. Jesus promises the kingdom. Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43, station 11. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let us pray. But let us pray not our prayer, but consider what Jesus might have prayed. Who will remember me? before my body was broken, discarded, wrapped in death linens. Who will remember me? Who will remember what I said and write it down? Who will tell the stories and sing the songs? Who will share what I said about love and God and neighbors and strangers and enemies? Who will unpack the bag I carried to here and find the rock I cherished all the way from Nazareth? Who will keep my new wineskin until it becomes their old wineskin? Who will collect the bread and the wine that I left on the back porch last night? Who will hold my mother today? 
Who will tell my aunts and my uncles and cousins that I have died? Who will curse the pacifist Messiah? Who will gather spices and, and pour the last of her perfumed oil over her own head? Who will hide in an upper room and regret the rooster's crow? Who will remember me? Will you remember me? Amen. Jesus speaks to his mother and disciple. John chapter 19, verses 25 through 27. Station 12. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Let us pray. Lord, you love your people, your mother, your disciples, your friends, and you give them to one another to become a new kind of family, bound not by heritage or genetics, but by relationship with you, to love one another as you have loved them. In the same way, take those around us and make our families new. Bind us together not by the things we use to define ourselves, but by your love which calls us each and all, siblings and Christ, and children of God. Amen. Luke chapter 23, verses 44 to 46, station 13. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Darkness at noon? That shouldn't be. It's upside down. How do we walk in the dark when we expect light? We lean into God and beg, lead and guide us. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, we cannot see in the dark. We need you first to give us breath, to fill us with your spirit, to give us life. Filled with the spirit, we open our eyes and we see. As the light fades and we hear the sound of the tearing of the temple curtain, we cry out, what have we done? What sacred space have we littered with our selfishness and arrogance? Have mercy on us. To you, Holy One, we entrust the spirit of life you first gave us. Amen. The 14th station, Jesus is placed in the tomb from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 57 through 60. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. 
he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. O Lord, help us to step forward when it is not convenient to proclaim our devotion to you as Joseph of Arimathea did for you. Let us give of ourselves, let us share out of our abundance, so all will know we are followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we leave this time together, let us pray together. Jesus, O oh, incarnate one, God's love in action. You said, I am. You never said, I am not. And yet, beloved one, you are dead. Love demands that the guards sleep, that the rock moves that the dirt falls away, that the linens untangle. Love demands all this. Our love demands all of this. With spices in our hands, we demand that suffering does not have the final word. You said I am. You never said I am not. Incarnate one, what do you want us to know? As we stand, sit, cry outside of your tomb, incarnate one, what do you want us to know? May we receive the blessing of this Good Friday, where Jesus whispers in our hearts, I am, I am, I am. Receive this blessing, the blessing of the great I am. In the name of God and the incarnate one and the holy breath. Amen. We go now in peace to love and serve the great I am as we love and serve in God's precious world. It is Friday. It is good. Amen. <laughs>